audio diary of Dr. Anna Georgina Plume, Assistant Professor of Social and Architectural History at Hollingsworth University. Recorded in my home office, formerly Classroom 1A, Ellis Field Elementary School. Elevator speech, take 25. You can do this. You have to do this. My research focuses on late 19th and early 20th century educational architecture with a particular interest in school buildings marking the social movement away from one-room schoolhouses. These buildings tell us more than simply about school structures. They tell us about the transformation which schools and education as a whole was undergoing within the United States at the time. I am also interested in normal school architecture where teachers were trained and students received education beyond what was available to them in their local schools. Actually, I recently purchased a building that was first a normal school and then a community school after they consolidated and closed a number of area one-room schoolhouses. Interestingly, this was the school I attended from kindergarten to third grade. The building was in use until about three years ago and the district held on to it before I bought it so it was surprisingly well preserved and everyone always asks if it's haunted and I found a box of documents in the basement including a planchette from a Ouija board and I may be in over my head. No, that's not it. Okay, so I need to work on that. Leave off the haunting stuff because it's not haunted, I think. I don't believe in ghosts, though that hasn't stopped them from haunting me. To review the facts, number one, I have dreamt of the third floor of the building, a floor that was removed years ago before I, hell, before my grandmother, set foot in the building. These dreams are eerily similar to dreams I used to have as a child. But that makes sense. I am back here again. I only had those dreams during the school year. It was a big part of my life. Uh, anyway. Number two. In these dreams, I'm looking for someone named Lucy. Incidentally, the school was founded by one Lucy Hobbs and her older brother Algernon, a fact I recently learned. This could also potentially be explained because I may have stumbled on the fact somewhere before and forgotten it, except that I don't forget things when it comes to this building. And a woman founding her own normal school is especially noteworthy for my research interests. If I had known about this, I would not have lost this information. Number three, there was a woman at the gate this morning. I know I've seen her here in the school when I was younger, but she doesn't appear to have aged in 25 years, though that could be explained both by the fact that I haven't seen her in a long time and memory is fallible. Also maybe she has good genetics, I envy her. But who is she? I don't seem to remember her in a classroom that would rule out her being any sort of guest speaker or substitute teacher. And why is she here when the building has stood empty for three years? Currently, even less explainable. Number one, why the young woman who works at the coffee shop always looks like she's seen a ghost when she sees me. Number two, the fact that every time I enter a room in this building, it feels like someone else just left it and the fact that I think I've caught glimpses of someone at the end of the hallways at night. Finally, there is the whole matter of the carousel in the gymnasium, which I would have less of an issue with if it didn't turn on suddenly at 2 a.m. Probably should get an electrician out to check the wiring. Lavender Evening Fog is a fiction podcast written by Victoria Dickman Burnett, 
directed by Ben Baird, and produced, mixed, and edited by Nick Federinko. Executive producers are Ben Baird and Victoria Dickman Burnett, and the voice of Anna Georgina Plume is Victoria Dickman Burnett. This short preview episode was brought to you by the glow of a campfire around which you tell your ghost stories.